So we'll start this, uh, this session about the mobile in, uh, in the B2B space, mobile for the professionals, mobile for uh, corporations, but uh, when the mobile is used by, by professionals, this is what uh, uh, the session is about. Uh, obviously, we are focusing on, on specific verticals, but uh, you'll see, uh, we'll, uh, we'll try also to, to focus on a, on, a, on a new usage that is not only uh, verticals, but it's something new on the B2B. And uh, we'll do our best to, to keep this really interactive. So what we will do is that we will make some break during the presentation and we will ask your uh, inputs, your feedbacks on what, what uh, has been said and to make sure that, uh, that uh, we keep on track and making it really interactive. So we have the pleasure to have with us uh, today at the EBG, we have uh, Noel Jaffre who is uh, the Technology Strategist Director for Oracle. You are, you are based in Paris? No? I'm based in Paris, yes. Good. I just close here, yes. Okay. Traveling a lot, but just based here, yes. And we have uh, Gokan Salmanoglu. True. I, d I did it well? Well, it's well. Uh, okay. It's acceptable, let's say. <laughs> <laughs> and um, you are the head of the division Neo Business on Digital for Pfizer. Yes. And you are based in Istanbul. 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 It's a nice place. Isn't yeah. that cool? To be, yeah, to be part of a global be company honest. and based in Istanbul? I'm not complaining, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. And uh, so maybe we'll start with you, Noel, because you want to give us uh, like, a, like a broad view of what, uh, what has happened in this space and how you envision the way the, the, the mobile is, is moving in this, in this B2B area. Yeah, the, the idea, I don't know if ah, you see the slide. So, the idea there is, is instead of going deep down in, in, the, in the mobile directly, the intent here is to show, share uh, how, we, well, how we get there. I think you've seen this screen, uh, and then I started from there, because it's a kind of screen we have seen very recently, you know? That's a, that's a screen, if you go to a travel agency, you can book an hotel, and so basically you give, uh, you, when you start uh, the trip in your hotel, when you see, uh, when you want to get out, the number of, of nights you are going to spend there, blah, blah, blah. So all this stuff there. So basically, this is the agency, which is working with their screens. And then when you, it turns on your face as a customer, it shows you, okay, what do you want to do? And, mm -hmm. and this is the room, this is the price, blah, blah, blah. So, uh, so what's happened since the internet is that we switched from this, basically that it was working, to that kind of screens. I'm sure you have seen that all, the, all over the web. But this is for the, the B2C. That's B2C. B2C. But that's a kind of evolution. So we move to some kind of B2B environment, to B2C. And, but you see the influence of that. Because if you are a business or someone doing business, you all like to, want or to have that kind of screen. It's mm -hmm. much, much nicer. And this is what we want all. So usability is all about that. It's not, uh, it's not something that we're talking about. That's a reality. That's a kind of screens everyone wants to, everyone wants to have. So then... What, what's happened? So you see, okay, that's the difference between the two screens, but uh, let's say, ask a question. What does it mean for you? Do you have an idea of that? Or maybe you, who, who, who what, what that mean as a question? Or, or the audience. What's the impact of this in the, the environment and the development of such application in the business? What's the impact of that kind of approach? Someone has an idea? Someone has an idea on that? What, what, what is the, the think from the, maybe I can just uh, give a quick comment. Go can, maybe you can, you can tell from us. From the user's perspective, uh, if you guys have uh, listened to the previous keynote, which uh, there, there was a part that I liked the most was, there is only one user um, in uh, for us. So there is not a, a corporate user versus a public user. We all are working in, enter um, in enterprises, so we are, Indeed, using the similar device, the same devices sometimes yeah. that I use for as my mobile in my personal life as well as in my business life. Uh, so users want the same experience uh, when they go to office. So they want uh, uh, they want user they want a similar easygoing user experiences in their enterprises as well. But what that means for the enterprise it might be a huge, a huge, huge transformation. Uh, taking all the um, uh, all the applications probably to cloud. Uh, making them uh, working accessible uh, throughout different uh, devices, different platforms, might be a huge investment. 
Got it? Good point. That one is means that, of course, as a business user, because we are at the same time a consumer and somebody working for an organization or mm. corporation. But so we went through this already with uh, the PC. Exactly. Because it was it was a, uh, a personal computer, was that it? Exactly. It was so a personal computer. We we use at home, and we bring it in the company, saying we want to use that. We don't want to use a mainframe anymore. That's right. That's exactly yeah. the same approach. So then the same the same thing we we apply to the personal computer is going there. So that means that the thing I'm using at home, I want to use it in the office in any way. And then I'm challenging the IT or whatever organization to give me that. But then there is another very important point you need to, to look at this. So uh, if you look at the screen on the, on the left hand side, when you see this as a developer, in this time, at this time building that screen, basically that was one developer doing that. He was building the data model, he was building the, the, the logic, and he was building the screens. He was doing all the development stack, not alone, but the team. But basically, it was coming from the IT direction or technical skills direction. If you look at the screen on the right, this guy now, and it's, it's not blaming that, this guy now, he needs other skills. You need to be an artist. To build that screen, the artist is a mandatory guy in the room. So then whatever application now we have to build to deliver services for consumer, that's already there. But the, the move is the same for all the corporation. The team of developing has changed since uh, uh, the last few months, the years, to uh, a single kind of team developing an application for a multi-skills kind of team to build the application. And you can see that also in terms of organization. If you look at, let's take Apple for example. Apple, who is the number two of the company today? The cash guy. Yes. That's Jonathan Hives. Hives is a designer guy. He's becoming the number two, which means all this kind of layout design stuff is mandatory, whatever product or services or content or UI you are going to build. Do you have this kind of yet of organization in, in Pfizer? When, when you go to your IT guys, I mean, they are not reporting to you, the IT guys, right? No, uh, my, my function is mostly in the business side, so mm -hmm. we have a separate IT function, uh, but there is a certain uh, group of architects uh, which is working on this side of the business. Mm -hmm. uh, I understand uh, um, they, they do rather care about more about the report, like reporting on the shipments and the market uh, forecast capabilities, uh, but I think it's becoming more of a need to also enhance uh, some business reporting capabilities for sales and marketing, yeah. which is, I think, a new journey for, for pharma industry. Sure. Hmm. Okay. And when Noel is speaking of multi-skills, you, when you build an application on your, on your division, you, s you, you you are moving in this already, or, or is there some sort of What, I, step what I hear take? from Noel is uh, there needs to be um, a, a synthesis of uh, artistic, artistic skills and the technical development skills. And yeah. once they come together and merge uh, with the understanding of the right user experience, then you get the success. Uh, what we do is, I think this is more of enterprise architecture and enterprise solution yeah. point of view, uh, mostly probably like. Uh, MRP systems and yeah. so on, all these um, uh, business reporting solutions in my understanding. What we do focus more is uh, mostly on the uh, on the day-to-day um, -day business uh, yeah. for sales reps uh, on their uh, mobile devices, which are uh, most like easier to build uh, mm -hmm. because there is already an infrastructure where we have to uh, gather some data and we, we mostly do it with uh, some local companies or agencies, so mm -hmm. uh, it's less of, uh, I would say, um, um, uh, less of an architecture issue, but more of a design and interface issue yeah, for us. More and more. Do you think one day uh, the number two of, uh, of a Pfizer will be uh, uh, the director of design or the creation <laughs> or an artist? <laughs> Probably not yet, <laughs> probably not yet, because uh, I will mention it uh, in my speech. Uh, I think pharma industry is following this trend a little bit uh, from behind, uh, so I think we are not there yet, uh, to be honest. Okay. okay. So let's move to uh, another idea. Uh, I think he, I'm talking here about uh, Volkswagen, uh, because I think I'm going to link that in some way for the IT. I'm going to show you how. 
Uh, I think there is two, let's say, very uh, leading or successful company in the car manufacturing just those days. One is Toyota because they, in fact, they moved on something they call the hybrid kind of car with mixed electricity and gas and and try to make something better for the ecology and things like that. So you know it. So, so that's a trend behind Toyota, and they, they are getting successful with this. Volkswagen took another area of play. You know, they bought a lot of brands. You know, they have Porsche as a brand. They have Audi, Volkswagen, Seat, Skoda, you name it. So then some of the success of Volkswagen is being able to build one platform. So then they create a platform on the, on the left-hand side here, and they try to reuse massively that platform across all of, all of the model. That means the, the Golf platform is used on the A3. It's also used on Skoda and some other game. Some other, I'm sure, I'm not specialists on that. But that's the game they are doing. So it means that one single glo global platform and reuse. And what's what's good about that is that you have a strong economy in building the platform, and then still you can address different market, different needs, mm -hmm. different kind of customer, different pleasure because the pleasure it can, it is part of that game. So that's really really important. So in fact, this is somewhere adaptability to the market, so to the market needs. Okay, so that's what Volkswagen is doing. How to link that to what we're doing in the IT or where the IT is coming from? So uh, let's say IT, uh, we're talking about separation from presentation, from uh, services, logic, data for years. Uh, but it was quite difficult since uh, the only platform we were delivering globally services was on Windows. So uh, before iPhone was there, 90% uh, even more, I think uh, the success of Microsoft is just there, 95% of the global platform. I think everybody, we're all still using a Windows platform. A little bit of Mac, I see now some Macs coming in, but that's really recent. The iPhone stuff is also moving the game there. So then, uh, in some way, if you look at it, we are becoming more and more, if we do not embrace it, uh, to support some kind of platform like Volkswagen, Volkswagen does. So it means you need a unique platform, but you need to deliver services on your different platform. That means your Mac, your iPhone, your Android, your tablets, maybe something later in the car. If I take, keep the example of the car, I'm sure when you wake up in the morning, drop in the car, you won't want to have some internet services in your car or maybe access to some banking system when you're stuck somewhere in the traffic or whatever, even if the authority will maybe stop us doing that, but still, that's a need. Or I don't know how to solve it, I don't know, but that's a need. So, Which is, is it really different than what we sell during years with client server or three-tier application and those, those things? Yeah. I mean, my question to you, Noel, will be what's, what's new? So in fact, yeah, because I'm from Oracle, and Oracle, I think, in the years was a kind of inventor or heavily participate in what we called in the time being client server. Mm -hmm. But that's a big difference. So let me explain that. In fact, when I'm talking about the platform here, it's not only data. Client server, when we were talking about the server, the data was stored in the server, and most of the logic of the application was on the client side. This is at the time where we needed to have big PCs to run this application because the data was just stored on the other way around. Where this new model that's going with the iPhone, the, new, the very light application, we don't want logic in the, daily, in, the, in the application itself and we just want to run it for a browser. That means not only the data would be in the platform but also all the logics. So that means the layer part is going to be uh, to support only the presentation. So mm -hmm. that means uh, that's really radically different from mm -hmm. the client server as we knew it uh, mm -hmm. as Oracle at anyway. So, but mm -hmm. most of the case, yes. Yeah, it looks yeah. like a very, very old invention of Oracle was yeah. the, the network computer. That's right. So, well, so it's who's dead, was dead, by the way, but but now it's a, it's a sort of a revival. It's there, yeah. It? yeah. Yeah, it's there. So then the conceptually, it's the same than Volkswagen. It means that I would like to have a unique platform mm -hmm. and reuse all my investment in the platform 
on the, uh, and use different UIs. Back to the first screens, also skills are different. You know, the skills to build the platform, build the logic and build all the data, the business process workflow as we call it, is really a need for the platform. Where on the UI side, you need your artist basically and someone being able to uh, assist the artist to plug, to plug the screen on top of the service and the application. Okay, do you, do you buy just, this? I have just okay. one challenge uh, with this. Uh, I think having a vision like this is great, so that's why it's great to have people like Noel in your company. Uh, but on the other side, uh, when it comes, like these type of things, when I call it as uh, like globalization of IT solutions, so you have mm -hmm. the global mindset and then uh, you have the global uh, solution with the scale and then you embed the local needs and then you customize, similar to the Volkswagen example. It's great to have the vision like this, but uh, as it sounds great in the paper, it doesn't really uh, come that easy in practice. Uh, this type of uh, uh, approach uh, uh, basically needs a lot of transformation, shutting down uh, even simple legacy solutions, mm -hmm. uh, cost millions of dollars uh, to, the, uh, to the companies, and then uh, changing all the uh, local solutions to the global ones uh, is a big nightmare in yeah. the corporations from user's point of view, process's point of view. But, but I understand, you know, we have yeah. to have this vision, we have yeah. to go iteration. And on the other side, users do have their, their daily needs, their daily chain requests, with, uh, which may sound very tactical, but uh, it's, uh, uh, it's what they have to get uh, yeah. to run their daily business. I think the key here is, uh, once you have this design artist, as Noel said, and, uh, and technology uh, experts uh, like Noel, uh, I think uh, the right uh, sweet spot is, how you uh, still have this vision and, and build, uh, build your platform based on that and how yeah. you embed your local solutions with iterations maybe like with the waterfall yeah. uh, approach. I think that's the sweet, sweet spot, which is a big challenge mm. to, to my opinion. I agree, I agree. So I think it, you, ca you can't go from something completely silo oriented with your application which is doing everything yes. uh, from something which is based on a kind of layered approach or let's call it services uh, to serve the UIs. Uh, but that's true. Uh, you can't say tomorrow I'm going to build that and then uh, in, a, in six months I will have a complete new architecture. So you need to, uh, that's a process within the enterprise to do that. So then, but there is a second big advantage. Remember, we said that here you are able now, if you co crop search architecture, to have, let's say, one set of services. Let's say you are a bank and you have your account. Let's say, show me the account for the business user on your screen. So then you can address that on the web, because on the web you want to be able to put a lot of data because the screen is much bigger, where if you address an iPhone or a Android phone, you would like to only show some little details because like maybe the big, the, the, the sum of the, the rest of your account because this is what you're interested by. So then uh, this approach will give you the ability to address seamlessly different devices without to rebuild your global architecture. But there is even a much bigger important things here behind that you even don't think is the, the fact that if you look at back to Volkswagen, one of the big things is address different need, different market. But there is another thing which is time life of the stuff. It means that in the lifetime, building the platform for Volkswagen, it takes 10 years, you know, from being able to do something very sophisticated support the crash test, you know, this is very, very huge investment, like you do, I think, in the rich research for Pfizer. So that there is some different lifetime in your company to do things. Building a platform for a car, building the IT infrastructure, we always say, they are very slow, these guys. They are not delivering the always. stuff I want. You know that. Uh, as a business user, my screen is slow. I don't get it what I want. It's not nice. We all know that. So that means that the, the, the waiting time from the IT or research in Pfizer is much, much different that you are behind the screen or you're waiting for a service. Time is really important. So by building that uh, for Volkswagen, for example, that's not only delivering on multi-cars, you can also say, oh, by the way, this guy don't want to wait 10 years for a new car. I want to buy a new car every three years. Any, any contract insurance behind always linked to three years. And even more, even some of the car manufacturer, every year there is something new on the car. They want this car to be attractive 
to address really what the market is delivering every year, and maybe it would be shorter. So then to be able to adapt that or to get your car in one year, you need that. Otherwise, no way to get this done. Okay? Yeah, sounds good. Yeah. Plus, it's very difficult to, uh, to anticipate what will be the move of the market, and, uh, and uh, especially uh, in B2B applications, that's it's difficult to say what will be the next device that the people will use in two or three years. Yeah. But we, we need three or three years to build this application. That's so right. So we don't have yeah. any choice. So we, and that's for sure that in every company, there was some guys clever enough in the past saying, okay, I know where the market is going. Mm -hmm. You know, it was that. Now, in fact, the move, has, the move is there so that consumer knows better than us. Mm -hmm. This is the consumer who is driving the market. This is these guys are telling us what we need to deliver. So it's not the opposite way. So that means that we need to go and follow all this, the consumer market, even for enterprise business. So then if you look at this, uh, on the IT, back to the IT, uh, look at the, uh, the number of uh, devices that we have seen the last three years. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it moved from Windows, remember, only. We have now Macs for desktop. We have uh, Unix didn't go there, that's wrong. Maybe they will come. Uh, but on the, on the mobile devices, the tablet, now look at the number of devices, the size. We can look at it uh, in portrait mode, in, in landscape mode. So many different ways to consume the data. So then you need to adapt this part here in a very short term, even if your platform will stay there for 10 years. So, and, that, and that will go because you can't build that in, in a minute. So I'm going to support the IT guys here because if they want to do the right job, they need time to do it right. Like Pfizer take time to build a new, uh, a new medicine. If they go too fast, I think they will kill us otherwise. Mm -hmm. it makes sense? Uh, yeah, someone has to react on that? Yeah, maybe in the, in, the, in the audience, someone has a question. Do you think that uh, the B2C applications and the way a uh, uh, consumer interact with, uh, with uh, the application will be the same in B2B and how it, how it drives uh, the innovation? If there is... A no one, I will turn to Gokan. No one, Gokan. Yeah, because we, from here we don't see anybody there yeah, in the we, dark we have side. So <laughs> <laughs> Gokan, uh, your, your perspective in, uh, in Pfizer? I, <laughs> I agree with the analogy on uh, inventing a drug, uh, innovating one uh, therapeutic area takes tens of years and mm -hmm. sometimes you, you still fail. Uh, on average, uh, one uh, one medicine, all the R&D cycle, um, it costs uh, at least a billion dollar. Uh, but then if you do it, uh, if you have a, a great blockbuster product, uh, you really, uh, really get uh, billions of dollars um, as, a, as a benefit over many years. I think it's, it's a great analogy. Thank you very much, Noel. Mm -hmm. yeah. so, uh, so just to resume that, in fact, here we are talking about speed of different speed for development. That means in some way agility, because when you're on the right side, you want things to be done fast, and you don't want to wait the IT for doing things. So then the IT job is not to provide you the application or the service as fast as the business is requiring, is to provide the infrastructure so that you can deliver those services fast. That's, 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 that's a game changing. You know, the, we have to reinvent that world. It, it, some, some of the company are already there. That's, that's what's going on. The second part associated with this is skills again. Mm -hmm. The skills that you need to build the platform and the skills that you need to, let's say, build the human, human services or interaction with the human on the other side is different. That means that skills of these guys and skills of these guys need to be different. Back to my first screens. And then the, that's also associated with cost. Cost of developing this can take more time because it's, it's important. That's the heart of the company is there. This is really the business of the company is in the platform. But on the other side, you need to serve that business, that service, whatever product very, very fast. And here you need to develop that fast, but the cost is not that expensive. Since the new modern development environment, like if you develop on iPhone or Android, you can find tons of developers mm. Uh, that are not that expensive because they're just coming to school, but they know how to develop on an iPhone or an Android. You just need to tell them how to plug this little, really nice application on top of your framework. Sure. Okay? Yep. And then the last question associated with this is that part. So, of course, when you go to, uh, to the, um, the, let's say, the two worlds, there is one world on the right, 
And then this is all about the customer, this is all about creativity, this is a, a language, blah, blah, blah. So yeah, I see it there. So that's nice and nice. We should have sent that from the beginning, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So in fact, this is the, the, the wording that you are using tr translate what you're waiting in fact, from the right. So I found even a study on that. They call it aesthetic language. I'm not a specialist in languages, but you can go uh, put the URL there. They are all talking about that. And then on the left-hand side, this is really what IT is doing. So they want to make things working. They want to have safety. They want security. They want the application running 100 days or 362 days per 62 days for seven hours or uh, well, seven, uh, seven days a week. 24 hours a day. So that's the, the question they have in mind are really, really different. So then how to make that work if you want to make that application working? So in some way, uh, I work with some company and maybe some guys from Renault are here. And uh, that's, that's the kind of stuff they are putting in place. Because of course, the two worlds are really different. You know, they are, they are different because of the life of the application. They are different because they are not they have not the same uh, requirement, the same needs. Time life is really different there, or the life cycle of building application. So then something is needed in the middle that is very tightly coupled with the strategy of the company so that you need to give to the business user and let's say the agency what they need from the IT. And the opposite way also, you need to explain the IT what's important for the business and make sure that none of the organization has too much power to the other. Because I've seen organizations then where business is taking the power because they say, wow, these IT guys are too slow for me. They are not delivering what I want from them. And I will never be able to get something right. So then they take the power because they get the connection with the CEO and they do things themselves. So then they are piling different, different solutions one on top of the other. Not to say it's bad, but at some point in time, it will make it difficult because they will lose the agility. Mm -hmm. On the other side, if the IT is too, too more power, then of course they are going to their, their own world. I need time to do things. If, I, if it's not done in the right way, I will, not, I will make it completely unsuccessful. So then someone has to tell them that there is no need or some other need. So re-architect stuff so that you are going to solve this problem there. So that basically how to come from that screen and look at all the different issues coming out, out of this and then go to how to make it a success within the organization. In a way, you are, you are um, trying to balance the, the, the two, uh, the two uh, ideas. And that's the, two, yeah, that's yeah, the two skills. And right. Yeah. And that's what uh, Renault has done. And Renault has created a kind of team. So talk with this guy. They call it kind of mediator which is able to, this is some, some guys from the business ent entity, some guys from the IT, and they try to build something around so that they understand each other in order to find the right strategy to apply the, let's say, the IT organization to deliver content, information, services across all the devices within the company mm -hmm. and make it right. Gokan, do you have yet this kind of organization? You are more on the business side. Yes, I'm not going to ask. I'm not going to ask if you're a drug called Mediator because <laughs> it's a very bad drug. No, indeed, you don't my have. My organization is uh, playing this role uh, for digital marketing uh, mostly. Uh, so it's still like something in between uh, business and, and IT. Uh, but I think for all the rest, enterprise art architecture, uh, there are there is a global team which is thing in New York. Uh, which is dealing with this type of uh, platform uh, platform topics for IT, and they are working with us with, with the system integrator. Yes, th 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 there is typically a multifunctional team, yeah. uh, which is uh, like there are people from uh, users, there are people from the business sponsorship side, uh, there are people from IT and uh, and procurement. Uh, so we typically form a multifunctional team to give this type of mm -hmm. decisions, which would impact all all the corporate. Okay. Yeah. Uh, thank you, and well, it was. A, I think it was a broad view on yes. the on the way the B two B application are, are moving. Um, Gokhan, maybe you can give us now your your perspective on, on this. And I know that you. Sure, I have also presentation, so let me uh, maybe start sure. talking. Uh, if you can, guys, move uh, to the next slides. Uh, so first of all, I'd like to ask uh, if there is anyone from uh, pharmaceutical industry or who's working with pharmaceutical industry. Uh. I see one hand. So. 
not too many people, which is not <laughs> a surprise. Uh, I was one of uh, one of you guys uh, a year ago. I used to work for uh, PNG for uh, more than seven years, uh, where uh, I spent my, my majority of time in digital marketing and 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 mobile marketing in regional and global roles. And uh, and I realized that there is a big opportunity in in pharma industry. So before I start, how mobility is helping to pharma, I'd like to mention a little bit about. Uh, the shift and the business uh, need, urgent business issue uh, in pharma and how mobility can help, uh, if you don't mind. Okay. Is it moving? Okay. Yeah. Okay. So indeed, uh, um, not only for Pfizer Turkey, but uh, for all the industry and for all the globe, there is a strong climate change in pharma. Um, if you think of the needs of the stakeholders, from the patients to the doctors, to pharmacies, driven by technology and all these economical uh, changes, uh, their needs are changing. The governments are uh, impacting a lot on the pricing policies that they want to buy the uh, medicines cheaper uh, for, the, for, the, uh, for the people so that more people are uh, getting treated. They are, having, uh, they are bringing a strong um, access regulations uh, to limit the visits to the doctors, to limit the meetings yeah. with the doctors, and so on. So therefore, uh, there is a huge, huge uh, uh, impact of this in all the industry. So one, one big impact is the amount of sales reps. If you, uh, if you know uh, the medical sales rep, these are like TVs of uh, pharma industry. So the biggest uh, marketing investment, the biggest sales investments are done to the uh, sales rep. Last year, just 10 days before I joined Pfizer, we had a lay of 300 sales reps. Uh, this is not specific for Pfizer Turkey or, or, or any other pharma company. It's a global trend. So imagine a world in all other industries where your TV is getting darker. What would you do? Uh, imagine a world where all the stakeholders are uh, having uh, access to different mediums to access information and so on. So therefore, we established this uh, division called Neo Business and Digital Marketing to reach our stakeholders uh, um, in, in, in different ways, in new channels, in new business models, leveraging technology and digital marketing. Basically, you have to bring more productivity. Exactly. And you have to, to bring more application instead of uh, because you have less people. Exactly. On the field. Exactly. So how do you increase, how do you, uh, increase the productivity of your less and field force? Okay. How do you uh, reach your uh, stakeholders through their mobile devices and so on? Does it still work? Some error signal there. Go ahead. Go ahead. Can you think click it doesn't on the work. Okay? <laughs> no. No. I think someone needs someone to click it, it there. Good. So, okay. so we have Gone. ten minutes left, Gokan. So, okay. so, so use I'll, I'll use your slide uh, accordingly so you to the to the, the time the, we have. Our main customer is still the doctors, so, so the healthcare professionals. So before we used to connect with them through only the sales reps. Now we know that they are surrounded with uh, all other multimedia. Uh, from mobile devices to web uh, devices, uh, through their um, SMSs, MMSs, uh, social media, and so on. So what we do is we are, we are bridging the future with uh, connecting our customers with those mobile applications. And what, uh, where the mobility helps here is uh, we are bring the, uh, bringing mobile sales reps with, uh, with their iPads on it. Uh, which uh, I'm going to show it in a second. So basically, uh, what we call it as multi-channel marketing in, in pharma industry. So instead of having uh, one product connection with, uh, with one doctor and all this uh, through different channels, uh, we are going to be talking about only one product. We are right now uh, switching to a world we have integrated channels as a seamless experience for the doctors and how you really leverage your less amount of sales reps in this equation. Mm. The answer is, uh, indeed, uh, the answer might be tough. Uh, if you think of uh, at the very beginning, it might be a complex, but there is a word uh, that, that I like a lot uh, from uh, Mohan Shalni, who's a guy from Kellogg School of Management. He says that, indeed, uh, uh, all this is uh, not new. So we are just uh, working with the broader canvas with richer set of colors, so all the uh, same techniques of marketing still apply. Uh, there is nothing to complicate, just that we have uh, more colors to paint. So, uh, and this is sometimes often confusing uh, 
uh, for the marketeers. So what do I do with all these mobility apps, with all, all these uh, patient apps, doctor apps, and so on? Uh, if, you, if you think of this tactically, it might sound like uh, you get crazy with uh, hundreds of apps and, 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 and uh, software solutions, but indeed you just uh, come back to your business, uh, business requirements. So do you mean that somewhere Pfizer is building application to give directly to the patient? Uh, in, in some cases, yes. Uh, okay. I, I think it's, uh, I wasn't intending to jump onto this topic since it's more B2C. But what we do is we try to also give services uh, to the patients. Is, these are non-branded uh, applications. So say for smoking quitters. So if you want to oh, yeah. uh, quit okay. smoking, right? So you go we directly to the... Yeah. We have an application which basically... Uh, makes it easier for you to track how much you consume today mm. and how you can quit and so on. Uh, this is non-branded and we do it uh, strategically only in the categories if we want to grow the market. Mm -hmm. If we are uh, not the market leader or the second, we try not to prioritize this. You don't want to evangelize the market for not, the others. Because these are not branded apps. But in <laughs> some way I was asking the question is that as you have less sales rep to address directly your business to business area, mm. you try to get access directly to some of the consumer, let's say the passion, instead of going to the broad classical okay. B2B. This, was okay. a this is, a, this is a, a slight different topic. Let me give you a perspective on, uh, on this uh, from a broader angle. Uh, there's a 50% uh, rule, uh, thumb of rule in, in pharma industry. What that says is uh, it depends from country to country, from uh, medical area to another area, but what it says is 50% of the people in the world are not aware of their diseases. The ones who are aware, 50% uh, don't go to the doctor. From those who go to the doctor, 50% don't take their receipt and buy their medicine. From those who buy their medicine, they don't follow their, uh, their medication and who are not compliant. So uh, as a pharmaceutical marketeer, if you think of this cycle, there is a 50% opportunity in every stage, right? Uh -huh. So if you touch this uh, patient journey, okay, um, from the patient to the doctor to the compliance, uh, then you get incremental revenues in all the stages. And I think this is, at one point, to increase the awareness of the disease, this is what we are trying to do. Or in some cases, we are trying to increase the compliance so that they don't stop using the medicines. Okay, got it. Yeah. Okay, got it. Yep. So iPads is one example of uh, digitizing uh, our sales reps. Uh, with the less amount of sales rep, as I was mentioning, we want to integrate them to our communication channels. Mm. Uh, so indeed, what sales reps talks with the, uh, with the doctor is extremely important, is very personal. But yet, without technology, they just stay on the minds of sales reps. So how do you really synchronize these uh, number hundreds of sales reps with all the other uh, marketing mix, all the other multi-channel marketing elements? And, and this is what we are trying to do with the iPads. So one thing is we really uh, synchronize our old content in the cloud and we let them basically to uh, speak with the right doctor, with the right content. And now what is more is uh, with the tablet technology, uh, the ones who are in pharma uh, would know it, there is something called closed loop marketing. So what that means is uh, you basically talk, uh, you basically prepare your content uh, based on your segmentation to the doctors. And then for the sales rep, it just then automatically comes uh, based on the segment, and then you are able to track which sales rep was uh, presenting to which doctor, how many minutes, mm. even to the point of detail, which type of content is liked by which, which doctor. And then all these answers as data is accumulated and comes to the headquarters and marketeer is able to see, okay, this presentation didn't work well, with this segment of doctor, yeah. this has worked well, so then uh, he can readjust as what we call as uh, close-up marketing. So they to see down the road the what's happening on their marketing exactly. and the way it exactly. is provided exactly. to the Exactly. So moving on, as I said, I'm trying to be fast. Uh, again, coming to this uh, previous word of uh, Mohan, uh, nothing really, ne really new in the uh, traditional business cycle. You always start with your strategy, you do your segmentation, sure. uh, you basically understand your customer with their insights, and then uh, you close to, you continue to close your loop with uh, the the uh, the tactical moves as solutions in iPads, the applications, and so on. And then you measure and adjust your strategy based on this. So, uh, so this is like really one of the slides that I like most when talking with brand managers in my company. They always tend to come with their applications. Hey, I found a nice mobile app. 
why don't we do that? And then, and then we challenge this cycle and what is your business objective? What is your targeting? Does is it really fit with your uh, business objective? And then they automatically find the answer. Um, mm. So uh, understanding customer is, the, is I think, uh, one of the most important thing, which in my previous uh, slide, we were talking about the customer uh, inside. Uh, so mobility is a great uh, enhancement in this cycle because uh, nowadays customers are demanding because they know we can. They want, uh, they want all the content when they want, where they want, whenever they want. And they want all the uh, nice user experience with the highest flexibility, yeah. regardless of uh, regardless of uh, devices and platform. So this was my last slide. Uh, I have just one more uh, video. Yeah, let's roll uh, it. Which we can yeah. go go for this and then maybe so take we questions. We can roll it now. This video is particularly. Uh, this was prepared by Microsoft, I think. Uh, sorry for that. Um, uh, this was for the vision of uh, vision of future, which is, I think, a nice connection of how technology can connect, uh, help connect patient with the doctor, with through the mobile devices, machine to machine devices, and then help with the rest of the transactions at pharmacy and so on. Can you play the video? <laughs>
Okay. So you give us a sort of a vision for the future? Yeah, I think it's, it, it might be one of those uh, integrations, which I think, uh, if you think of those elements, this, uh, if, if probably we seen this video 10 years ago, it might seem like a bullshit, to be honest. But now, uh, in this world, I think, we pretty much have uh, almost all these components, just that we are just uh, maybe a little bit behind this okay. in terms of the connection. Uh, the challenge really exactly. is to bring all the, the, the exactly. you like you have presented. Thank you. A round of applause for our panelists. We are just on time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.